So the classical levy kinchin formula um, decomposes, uh, to be precise, um, the logarithm of uh, the characteristic function of an infinitely divisible probability measure into a Gaussian part and um, another part which is can be realized as, expre as a um, combination of jumps, mixture of jumps. That's the, the classical formula. Um, infinitely divisible measures, um, prob uh, probability measures, are the time one um, distribution distribution of the time one t equals one value of um, a levy processor, an independent increment process. And Uwe spoke a little bit about that in, in his, his talk. Um, and from the process point of view, uh, one can take the levy kinchin idea and realize a levy process as a combination in terms of a ga its Gaussian part and its mixture of jump jump parts. That's uh, Levi Ito. Okay. Um, and we had, well, I'm not going to make this a history lesson because uh, KRP is, does that so resoundingly well. He's already treated you to some history earlier on. Um, one realizes that um, what is essential for levy kinchin and for even for the idea of levy process is group structure or even semi-group structure. So, 1956, um, Hunt wrote a well-known paper, well-known in the area, um, where he generalized levy kinchin to, um, to groups. What I want to do today is describe, is to talk about how one goes about generalizing them to quantum groups, specifically compact quantum groups. Um, so the first half of the talk will be setting the scene and proposing the problem and also proposing a strategy for a solution to the problem. So what is the problem now? So when one goes quantum, one replaces a convolution semigroup of measures by convolution semigroup of states states on the quantum group. Um, states have their generators, that corresponds to the logarithm of the characteristic function of an um, uh, infinitely divisible measure. Um, so one is looking to effectively decompose the generating functional of a convolution semigroup of states. So I know lurking in the audience there are some people who are not so keen on probability. So to that part of the audience, I assure you that uh, with the exception of two slides, um, this will be analytic. Um, on the other hand, probability is clearly in the, in, the, in the background and the language used will be probabilistic. <coughs> there is a notion of quantum levy process as Uwe very briefly introduced. Well, central idea of Ove's talk because he was looking for candidates for Brownian motion. So here we are looking to, um, again, decompose the generating functional of a convolution semigroup of states into a Gaussian part and another part which is anti-Gaussian no Gaussian part, wholly non-Gaussian. So that's the, that's the program. Um, uh, this program was started by uh, Mikhail Skyder, student of Mikhail Schumann, in his doctoral thesis. I have the date of that, 1994. <coughs> but actually, on one historical note, I would like to quote from Hunt's paper, which I have here. It's so an interesting uh, historical aside. This paper grew out of discussion with Bochner. It would be hard now to disengage 
his contribution from mine. Okay. So. Most importantly, this is joint work with two old friends, one in the audience, uh, Ove Franz and Michal Skyder, and a more recent friend, Anna Kula, a Polish mathematician at uh, Wroclaw. Um, and it was, the work was supported initially, some years ago, um, by the wonderful scheme that Ove Wolfach have of research in, research in pairs. Of course, four people don't make a pair, but um, uh, Ove Wolfach are liberal about that. I don't know what the upper, there is, probably is an upper bound. Oh, four is the upper bound. We, we stretched to the upper bound. Anyway, we spent two enjoyable weeks there with a list of, a completely unrealistic list of problems to tackle. We spent the whole time on this one, and at the end we thought we had the solution. Took some years to iron out um, some of the technical difficulties. But now I hope to present to you the, in outline, the whole solution to the, to the problem. Um, which we've recently convinced ourselves of. Okay, so, well, <coughs> now we've seen um, Uwe tell us about quantum groups, and most recently, fresh in your memory, hopefully, Debashish um, tell us again. So I, but I will, don't wish to rush anything. So I want to distinguish between um, several aspects of a, of a quantum group so a quantum group ought to be thought of as a virtual object. So the paradigm here is um, C-star algebra is non-commutative topology. So uh, a general C-star algebra is a C naught of X. But of course, X doesn't exist. There are no, there are no points. It's not, it doesn't consist of functions, non-commutative functions in a sense. So in that spirit, um, the C-star aspect of a quantum group should be it's a compact quantum group, as it, as it is here, should be C of G. So that's the spirit, the, will be the spirit. So in order to set that up, we have a Voronovich algebra, which is sometimes just called a quantum group for short. Um, <coughs> uh, C star algebra with a co-product. Um, so that means this co-associativity, reflecting associativity of the group action. And um, this cancellation property, which reflects group as opposed to semi-group. So, Voronovich algebra, on the other hand, CQG algebra, um, is a Hopf algebra having a Haas state. That's a state which enjoys translation invariance, which encodes nicely like this in terms of the co-product. So some remarks. The Haas state of a CQG algebra is, is unique and necessarily faithful. Every Voronovich algebra has a unique Haas state, which may or may not be faithful. In the other direction, so uh, sorry, every, ha every Voronovich algebra has a canonically associated uh, dense star subalgebra, which has been referred to in Uwe's talk um, and in uh, Debashish's. Um, which is, contains the unit of the, of the Voronovich algebra, and it's a CQG algebra, so it has the extra structure of uh, co-unit co and co-inverse. Um, and these may or may not um, extend to um, the Voronovich algebra. So a compact quantum group is determined by any of these three objects, uh, uh, two Voronovich algebras, the universal and the reduced, um, and one CQG algebra, the coefficient algebra of the group. So um, the CQG algebra is the canonically associated CQG algebra of either of the Voronovich algebras. Um, these are completions, and the, the Voronovich algebra is a completion of the CQG algebras with respect to, to norms two norms defined in a different way. Um, the Haas state um, is faithful on the reduced, um, 
and the reduced is naturally realized on um, the GNS base with respect to the our, our state, as was very effectively exploited and referred to by de Bashish in his talk. The co-unit um, does extend to the universal version. Um, and for any Voronovich algebra, having um, RG as its CQG algebra, the epimorphisms um, from the universal onto A and from A onto the reduced. And for um, nice quantum groups, co so-called co amenable quantum groups, um, uh, these are all isomorphisms. So there's a unique um, uh, Voronovich algebra. And that's the, that's the case um, in the quantum groups we're interested in here. Okay, for the analysis, um, here's a basic ingredient of the analysis. Um, this the family of ideals of um, the CQG algebra. Um, the kernel of the co-unit and then um, th that generated by products of elements from the kernel. And this projection, pr the natural projection onto the kernel um, uh, plays, a, plays a role. And another other family of projections plays an important role. So if we um, take a complementary star invariant subspace of K2 and K1, K, uh, J12, then um, projections onto K2 along I plus that complementary subspace. Um, we'll use the letter Q for this consistently in the, in the talk. So those projections. Those projections are consistent with uh, P and they are Hermitian. So those are two important facts about them. So a convolution semigroup um, of states on A, um, I should have, should have said that, um, uh, there's the definition um, and uh, the, the relevant continuity condition is pointwise continuity. A functional on A is a generating functional if it vanishes at one, is Hermitian and is conditionally positive, which was mentioned by in Uwe's talk. So positive on um, uh, K2, effectively. So Schumann's theorem is that um, these things are in one-to-one -one correspondence. So the generator of the convolution semigroup is of this type, generating functional, and one can exponentiate in the convolution sense on the CQG algebra, on the Hopf, Hopf algebra. So this is doing analysis on an algebra and it works because of the wonderful gift of the fundamental theorem of co-algebra, which means um, one can be in finite, one is effectively in finite dimensions for uh, manipulations. So I'll use this gamma A to denote the generating functionals. And that's our um, basic object of study. For a Hermitian, uh, the we have this identity here. So we call the Hermitian epsilon epsilon derivation a drift. So these are the simplest kind of generating functionals. So a drift necessarily satisfy, uh, uh, kills the identity and it satisfies this identity here. So um, it follows from this relation above that drifts are precisely the generating functionals which vanish on this second ideal, K2. So now another ingredient in the story is so-called structure maps. So a structure map is a linear map now from the algebra to bounded operators on um, a multiplicity space K augmented by one more dimension, so C plus K. So they have block matrix structure. So here's the, ident the governing identity. So they fail to be a star uh, epsilon derivation by this, this term here. And this term is um, accounted for stochastically, if you like. You recall the projection. So structure relations, they simplify if we just look at elements um, on K. So it becomes this relation here. So they are Hermitian. Uh, they vanish at, at uh, identity and satisfy that identity here. I'm not using the pointer at all. No, I'm not doing that. Um, 
So that's, a, that's an equivalence. So if we look at the block matrix structure, so it's a 2 by 2 corresponding to the C plus K. So the top left is a functional, the bottom right um, is a map into uh, B of K, and then there's eta will, give, will be column valued and eta dagger row valued. So row, so the bottom uh, right is a representation uh, composed with the projection P, projection onto K. But by representation in this talk, I mean unital star um, morphism into uh, B of K. So eta is a row epsilon derivation, and an equivalent way of saying that is um, the simple identity here. And the gamma satisfies this condition here. That's how it's related to eta. And that simplifies nicely um, to um, vanishing at 1 being Hermitian and satisfying this identity here. In particular, that tells us that the top left-hand corner of a structure map is a generating functional. So we're dressing, in a sense, a generating functional. And that dressing is crucial. So every structure map has a generating functional as its top left-hand corner. So we'll use phi for the generating functionals and D for the derivations. And we have one more definition. A, a, a structure map is non-degenerate if uh, eta has got a dense range. So Schumann's theorem says we can go backwards. We can do GNS type construction on a generating functional and get um, a structure map. And it's unique. It's unique up to unitary equivalence. Okay. So we speak of the structure map associated to a generating functional. So the structure map of a drift, that's the, the very simplest kind of generating functional, is the thing itself. No K is needed, so no, from a probabilistic point of view, no noise is needed to handle um, uh, uh, such a generating function, the drifts. So if we take two structure maps, then there's a natural composition law which will give us a third um, uh, uh, structure map. Um, uh, the language comes from quantum control theory. Um, so we arrange it, we arrange the, two, the ingredients in a matrix like that. And notice the top left is the sum of the two generating functionals arising. So we have that picture. Um, well, so I think I will, won't dwell on that nice remark, which I think may stem from Skyder. Um, so here's a, here's a particularly simple kind of um, generate, uh, structure map, inner structure maps. So inner structure maps are determined by two ingredients, a representation, that features in the bottom right of the block, and um, a vector, a vector from the, um, the, spa the representation space, which one thinks of the multiplicity space or as a dimension space for the noise, um, whatever that means. So um, here are the, here is the definition of the um, column part of the structure map and the generating functional itself. So this, this stands for the vector state uh, determined by the vector psi, composed with rho, composed with our projection. So, um, well, the algebraic conditions of why that gives you a structure map are included in the slide, but I will brush over them um, and uh, hope you take that on trust. The column map is an inner row epsilon derivation, so that's where the, in a sense, where the language comes from of inner structure map. And this is an interesting point from, from the analytic challenges of constructing the process associated with such things. Because this, this tells you a, a kind of complete boundedness, gives you a sort of hint of complete boundedness um, here. So these are simple algebraically, and they're also simpl simply simple from an analytic point of view. So, from, uh, so here's a general scheme for constructing um, structure maps. So we have the second um, ideal K2 there. The second ideal can be expressed usefully in this fashion, linear span of C star C, C running through K through polarization. 
So let's call psi um, the collection of pairs consisting of a, of a row epsilon derivation and a functional gamma naught on K2, which, um, corris which relates to eta by that formula there. Q is the family of these um, uh, projections Q um, along to, onto K2 along um, a subspace which includes the identity. So Q is a mission compatible with P um, and given such a pair we can right away write down a generating functional. So that's one means of obtaining generating functionals from slightly less data. So next, um, the topology of the collection of um, uh, uh, rope sign and derivations and this family of pairs, psi. So uh, the derivations are closed. Um, it's a linear space. It's closed under pointwise convergence, as is psi. And if we have a net in psi, which converge, it, it, it converges precisely uh, if its first coordinate does because of the close relationship between the two. So corollary of that is pointwise limits of inner derivations uh, have the property that if we have a pair, if we, if we put this as a, a um, row matrix, we can extend that pair to a structure map. Here's the proof. Well, the proof uses um, this um, structure I've just been described, this, this simpler structure. So such things are composed, um, look like that. That's a, that's a class. So this is the slide I warned the, those in the audience who are a little bit averse to probability about. So you can avert your gaze. <coughs> so Sherman proved. Um, this, is, this is Sherman theory, sort of updated and modified to, for the task in hand. But this is the um, important theorem of Sherman's. He's, he showed that uh, starting with a structure map, you can generate actually a, a quantum stochastic process, a quantum process, a quantum levy process. Um, uh, I won't go into the details of what that means, but um, here's how it relates to, the, to a ge the, the generating functional bit of the structure map. And um, it actually is governed by a quantum stochastic differential equation, so driven by quantum stochastic integrators in the sense of Hudson and Pathasarathy. Quantum Levy process, just as classically, quantum Levy processes are determined up to quantum stochastic equivalents by their generating functionals. So our problem, question, let gamma be a generating functional on the CQG algebra of a, quant a compact quantum group. Can gamma be expressed as a Gaussian part plus a part which is, uh, I, I said earlier, anti-Gaussian. That's maybe a nice shorthand for this talk. Uh, wholly non-Gaussian is a bit more of a mouthful. So a generating functional is Gaussian if its structure map has this special form. So the representation is just the co-unit and then amplified. Okay, equivalently, um, well, we'll see some equivalences shortly. This means that the quantum stochastic differential equation defining its associated quantum Levy process involves no number or preservation terms. That's for those, of those in the audience who know about such things. Only creation, annihilation, and time parts. So, remark. Yes, given a generating functional with associated structure map by the Sherman theorem, it being Gaussian is equivalent to gamma now vanishing on K3, one, step, one stage smaller in the chain of um, ideals, if and only if its um, uh, derivation vanishes on K2, if and only if the representation vanishes on K1. So that's a nice, this is Schumann um, result. So back to the analysis. So let's set about this task. So first of all, we define a subspace of the multiplicity space K, KG, given a representation, rho, and a derivation, eta, 
form Kg, the subspace, which is the kernel, the intersection of the kernel of rho composed with a projection um, at A, intersection over A, or equivalently, intersection over uh, C in um, the ideal of the kernel of rho, rho C. And let Kr be the, the rest, R for rest, so the, the orthogonal complement of um, the Gaussian part. And then corresponding to this orthogonal decomposition, um, the representation decomposes, and as does the derivation. So um, we get rho g now is uh, um, uh, equal to this representation here. E to g is a rho g epsilon derivation, and e to r is a rho r epsilon derivation. So an easy fact is if, if you do this twice, it's the same as doing it once, and if you do it one way, one way, and one the other way, you get, you get, you get nothing. Um, so applying this to the structure map phi of a generating functional gamma, we get this picture for this decomposition of the structure map associated with the gamma. Question, can e to g zero or e to r rho r composed with p, can, that, can either of these be completed to a structure map phi g and or a structure map um, phi r so that their concatenation uh, sum uh, equals phi um, and the sum of the corresponding generating functionals is gamma. Uh, easy fact is one can if and only if the other can. So we can either solve this for the Gaussian part or solve it for the wholly non-Gaussian part and we're done. So lemma, Skyder, I've called dubbed this the sky dilemma. Given a generating functional gamma, uh, you can show that there is one of these special projections onto K2, um, which respects gamma. Okay, so a strategy now for solving uh, for, for the levy kinchin solving the levy kinchin problem for a group. Given a generating functional, which is not a drift, because there's nothing to do in the case of a drift, um, so gamma is not vanishing on K2, second ideal. Um, let, uh, let this be its associated structure map and let rho g, e to g, rho r, e to r be the Gaussian, holy non-Gaussian parts that I've just described. Then um, uh, rho g composed with p is, is zero. So that's reflected here. And if either rho g naught or maybe completed to a structure map like that or so that should be e to g, it's a misprint, or e to r rho r composed with p can be completed to a structure map here, then both, may, can both complete to structure maps. That's a repetition of what I've just said. And we have this nice relation here. So the original gamma at c star c is gamma 1 plus gamma 2 on c star c. So the two gamma, original gamma and gamma 1 plus gamma 2 agree on k2. So the generating functionals gamma, they agree on k2, and they also agree on one. So you let Q be a Skyder projector for gamma. So we have this relation here. And then gamma one composed with Q plus gamma two composed with Q is a levy kinchin decomposition of gamma. So um, that's a strategy for the proof. So if we succeed, if we can establish either of these two, so it allows us to go either way, we're gonna go this way for the SUQN. So, if every given a, a representation of the CQG algebra, if every derivation, every rho epsilon derivation um, has the property that um, this can be the bottom row of a structure map that's saying all, that works for A for all derivations have that property then Gaussian ones and wholly non-Gaussian ones do this is or one or other of these two will give us levy kinchin so that's a picture of where we, where we are Franz Gerhold Tom Thank you for that diagram. Um, and levy kinchin is this question here. Wholly non-Gaussian or anti-Gaussian. Thank you. Thank you. So, 
is the theorem, and then I'll discuss how we outline how we proved it. Uh, the central theorem is this is the positive result here. And we'll pick up that on, on the way, which tells us that forces us down to the wholly non Gaussian route for solving the problem. Yes. So um, SUQN has the property that um, on the previous slide, ND, this one here. So uh, uh, not all, but the wholly non Gaussian ones do extend to a matrix. That's true for all n, so we have levi kinchin for all n. So Skyder proved it for n equals 2 in his, in his um, PhD thesis. Uh, so as I said, in Oberwolfer, we, so we thought, oh, well, we'll knock off the case n equals 3, 4, and so on in a few days and move on to the next remaining problems, but it was not to be. And a nice saying I learned from my time in India was uh, a good problem is a problem which bites back, and this one certainly did bite back. OK. So we've seen, no, we haven't seen representation of SUQN. In, we saw a number of rep representations um, uh, of quantum groups in Debashish's talk. So this is one which has a distinctive flavor to it. The star is not appearing. So SUQN, as an algebra, is generated by, the, by UIJs and an element which is written symbolically d inverse. Um, so the relations are there. In particular, um, this one, that this extra symbol here, d inverse, is an inverse for the quantum, quantum determinant, which is defined in terms of just the, the uij's, not their adjoints. So um, we take the unital, as a unital algebra, that's what um, the CQG algebra of U, UQN is now. And it's had star bialgebra structure, uh, bialgebra structure and star structure given by these formulae here. We don't need to um, dwell on these um, too much. And then we get SUQN um, by replacing, by uh, getting rid of uh, the symbol D to the minus 1 as a generator and replacing the last relation by uh, dq, the quantum determinant is 1, and the adjoint is the simplified version of um, the adjoint. Yeah. OK. So key consequences of the Q relations. So we, we'll let ej um, be um, the real part of ujj minus 1 and uh, dj the imaginary part. Then A as an algebra is generated by the UJKs with J not equal to K, the EJs, the, the DJs, and 1. So from uh, ha the action of the co unit, um, UJK minus delta JK1 is in K for all JK. And here's some further facts. The UJK turn out to be in the infinity ideal, K. Um, EJ is in K2. EJ is the. Um, a uh, real part, the DJs are not in K2. So they're of interest to us. They sum to something in K infinity. They're linearly independent, at least the last uh, n minus 1 of them are. And the last n minus 1 give a subspace of K complementary to um, K2. So they give us a Q, one of our projections. And their commutators all lie in K infinity. So those are the crucial facts for us. So for uh, SUQN, the codimension of K2 in K is n minus 1. And for every element A, B, and K, the commutator is in K3. Okay. So sufficient conditions on a quantum group um, for Gaussian, uh, for not all Gaussian uh, derivations to be extendable to a um, structure map uh, come from this condition of Hermitianity of a, a derivation. So that's the Hermitian condition. Suppose G has the property that the commutators of all elements in K lie in K3, then for any Gaussian structure map, 
um, eta, the, the, the derivation part, is necessarily Hermitian. So there's a proof there, but I won't... I mean, the proof is... Ele that's how elementary it is. So some, here's some relevant facts. Let me call GD the dimension of the space of Gaussian derivations. Then this coincides with the co-dimension of K2 in K. So for our case, uh, N minus 1. And there are non-Hermitian Gaussian derivations unless this is one-dimensional. Um, it's easy to see. Therefore, um, GD fails in any quantum group for which um, star, this condition here, holds, and um, GD is greater than 1. And SUQN for n bigger than 3 um, is in that category. So um, not all Gaussian um, derivations resolve into structure maps. Okay. So now, um, for the remaining time, I want to show how the wholly non-Gaussian, on the other hand, we do, uh, we can um, extend those to structure maps. So, step by step. Any representation rho of A, the kernel of um, uh, the image under the representation of I minus UNN is an invariant subspace, first lemma. Theorem, let rho K be a representation, then rho has a unique decomposition to representations rho 1 up to rho n, such that rho 1 is Gaussian, and for n greater than or equals 2, rho, two, uh, rho n lives on um, uh, the CQG algebra of the quantum subgroup SUQN, and moreover rho n of I minus U and n is injective. So being a quantum subgroup of SUQN, there's a CQG ep uh, epimorphism SN, so we'll use that language. To say that rho n lives on a n, what does it mean? It means it factorizes. And the factorization is unique by uh, subjectivity, um, and it's necessarily a representation. Okay. Next lemma. For j and k less than n, u j n is expressible in terms of, so eta u j n is expressible in terms of eta u n n, just that single value, eta at a single value, and similarly eta u n k, and the rest, eta at u j k, can up to this factor here. So in, in injectivity of this operator here is, 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 is crucial, is going to be crucial, decisive. So lemma, let rho be a representation of the CQG algebra um, such that it lives on um, uh, an minus 1 and uh, rho of i on un minus 1 and minus 1 is injective, then every rho epsilon derivation eta also lives on the quantum subgroup. So that's the next lemma. Proposition corresponding to the decomposition um, so we get, so here we got the decomposition of the, of the representation corresponding to that. Um, we have a decomposition of um, the derivations and uh, again um, eta n for n greater than or equal to 2, eta n lives on a n and eta 1 is, well, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, a derivation with respect is a Gaussian derivation with respect to the Gaussian representation. Okay, and lastly, eta is determined by all these values, eta at u n n, for that reason. Oops, wrong way. So now, <coughs> next, uh, rho, let rho be a representation such that, um, and here big N could be little n for the point of the lemma, uh, rho i minus u n n is injective, let eta be a rho epsilon derivation on A, then eta is a pointwise limit of these inner, uh, well, yes, inner um, derivations determined by a vector, and here's the vector. So we take P as a number between 0 and 1, and then we form rho of i minus P u n n, um, uh, rho u n n is a contraction, so p times it is a contraction, so that makes sense uh, for each p, and it's uh, so xi p is given by that, 
So eat is a limit of those. Essential ingredients. So this is a key result in the, in the work. Um, so what are the essential ingredients of that? So it's the expression of the eta ujk in terms of the eta unn on the earlier slide, together with an elementary Hilbert space property of Hilbert space contractions that um, uh, if I minus C is, C is a contraction, if I minus C is injective, then um, we have this convergence here to the identity operator. Otherwise, it's going to be converging to um, a project, uh, projection. So now, we're putting that together. We get this proposition, that rho be a representation. Let rho 1 sum up to rho n be an eta 1 to eta 1 be the decompositions we obtained. Rho 1 is Gaussian. And for n greater than 2, rho n and eta n live on a n, the quantum subgroup. Rho n 1 minus u n n is injective. And eta n, so the nth of the derivations, is a pointwise limit of... Um, inner derivations and so for any projection Q um, uh, in the family projection onto K2 along a subspace which includes the identity and each n greater than equal to 2 eta n rho n composed with P um, may be completed to a structure map in which gamma n is um, invariant under the Q we can do that. So that's the conclusion. Um, and very near the end. Uh, yes. So a functional is nice. If every functional on subgroup n minus 1, uh, uh, SQQ n minus 1, has the property that gamma minus gamma primed composed with uh, the epimorphism for quantum group um, SUQN onto SUQN minus 1, um, that gamma primed under the same composition is a drift, is trivial from the generating functional point of view. So here's the theorem. Let gamma be a, a, any generating functional and Q be a Skyder projection for gamma. So gamma composed with Q is gamma. Then gamma is uniquely expressible as gamma 1 plus da -da -da plus gamma n, missing plus there, where gamma 1 is Gaussian, and for n greater than 2, gamma n composed with Q is gamma n, and gamma n um, is also equal to gamma n prime composed with now. This is um, uh, the epimorphism from SUQ n to SUQ little n for some nice, um, nice gamma n primed. So conclusion. Um, for n greater than 2, gamma n is wholly non-Gaussian, and gamma 2 up to plus up to gamma n is, is also. The, so here we have the levy kinchin decomposition um, of gamma. Moreover, it's the unique levy kinchin decomposition into a Gaussian part and a wholly non-Gaussian part um, with this extra property here, that gamma r is gamma r composed with q, um, where q was the... Skyder projection for the original generating functional. Thank you very much for your attention. family UQN interlaces with SUQN and you can exploit that interlacing to get the same conclusion. So, so I've, I've focused on UQN and we debated it over the time whether to do the whole thing for the UQN family and deduce it for the SUQN and in the end it turned out easier to do it this, this way around. So we have it for the family UQN, so levy kinchin holds for the quantum group UQN. And thank you very much, Tabashish. I forgot to thank you for ending your talk with uh, uh, emphasizing the importance of UQN as um, uh, the quantum isometry group. Um, but um, 
since the methods are, they have some generality about them, we're, we're confident that we should be able to tweak them to capture uh, some more families of quantum groups. But that's for the future. We haven't early days for that. Thank you.